JavaScript is one of the most popular programming languages in the world right now, but is it useful for data scientists to take the time required to learn it? Keep watching and we'll discuss this. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. So hopefully some of you have seen my video on a study pathway for up and coming data scientists. Basically, I recommend before anything else, learn SQL, then pick either one of R or Python and master it. Later on, you can go back, take the other one, and learn enough to be dangerous. Then some of you have maybe seen my videos on SAS and Power BI, where I talk about the future of these technologies and whether or not your standard run-of-the-mill data scientist should invest time into learning those. Whenever I make one of these videos, I get a mix of both interest and trolls. And I enjoy both of those things, so I figured, why not? I'll make a video about JavaScript, too. Now, if you've seen those videos, you know the sorts of things that I'm going to talk about. But if you haven't, I'm going to overview them before we get started. First, I'm going to talk about what JavaScript even is in the first place. Then, based on whatever available metrics I can find, I'm going to talk about how popular it is, both at large and then specifically in the data science community. I'll talk about, using my own experience as a guiding factor here, how easy or difficult that it is to learn, and then I'll talk about some of the use cases that data scientists might find for it. There's way too much pressure out there in the data science community to learn lots and lots of different technologies, so I'm going to end with some factors that will help you decide whether it's worth taking the time and investment to learn JavaScript. Before I do all of that though, take a moment to hit the like button to this video for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell, that way YouTube will notify you whenever I make a video, and then lastly, I'll have a link to my Patreon account in the description of this video, and if you guys would be willing to support me over that way, it would be massively, massively appreciated. All right, so to be perfectly honest, JavaScript probably doesn't require any introduction at all, but I'm going to try to provide one anyway. JavaScript has been around since 1995, and alongside HTML and CSS, it's one of the primary scripting languages behind the internet as a whole. The trademark of it is owned by Oracle, but the language is defined by an organization called the European Computer Manufacturers Association, or ECMA. It's an object-oriented language that's generally compiled just in time. And it's dynamically typed, although because it's defined by the ECMA script language standard, it's not open source. And then probably the most common way that it's used is through Node, which is a command line interpreter. Using that, you can make use of NPM, that is the Node Package Manager, to install and use JavaScript libraries. Now the contrast with HTML and CSS is that while those two things typically drive the structure behind a web page, JavaScript's claim to fame is its ability to drive the interactive elements behind web pages. And there's a little bit of confusion and sort of an assumption that it's closely related to Java just because of the name, but Java is a completely different thing and it's totally out of the scope of this video anyway. Many others are probably familiar with JSONs, that is JavaScript Object Notation, which is a pretty common way of storing objects through attribute value pairing. Now as we talk about how popular JavaScript is in general, the simple answer to that is extremely. As of December 2020 anyway, JavaScript is number 7 on the Tyobi index. Now this index is defined by how much it's pinged on various search engines out there, so of course this isn't a perfect metric by any stretch of the imagination, but out of all the languages that the Tyobi index tracks, JavaScript enjoys 2.35% of the search results on all of them. And this isn't an apples and oranges comparison at all, least of all because of how much they're used for data science purposes varies massively, but JavaScript is far behind Python, though at least right now, it does enjoy a very comfortable lead over R. That's wonderful and everything, but the real question that you should be asking is how much is it used for data science specifically? I couldn't find any job reports on it, but there is one specific finding from the 2020 State of Data Science report from Anaconda that's worth pointing out. 
Basically, they conducted a large multinational survey of data science professionals and asked how often they use various languages. They found that 91% of people at least sometimes use Python. Then there's a big drop off to 47% of people that at least sometimes use R. Then there's another drop off to 35% of people that at least sometimes use JavaScript. So I think it's fair to conclude the following. It's not the most popular programming language in the world, at least in the data science community, but the chances that you're going to end up running into it or having to use it for some reason are significantly greater than zero. That holds true for me personally as well. More on that later. But you're probably also wondering how difficult it is to learn. And my simple answer to that would be, out of all the programming languages out there, it's right up there with Python as one of the absolute easiest to learn. JavaScript is the first programming language of choice for quite a lot of people, and I think it's a very gentle introduction to the nuances and challenges that come with coding in general. If you're somebody who's coming from an R or Python background, as I imagine a lot of my viewing audience is, you're going to find it syntactically very similar to Python, in part due to the object-oriented nature of both of these languages. Ultimately, Python and JavaScript do have a lot of differences and completely separate use cases, but I will provide in the description of this video some resources for learning JavaScript through W3Schools and through Codecademy. I think both of these are awesome. All those resources are free, and if you go through all of them, it'll probably take you about 30 hours of time, but after the fact, you're going to have a pretty reasonable handle on the language and be ready to try some real-world projects. For a programming language, that's not too bad. In addition, there's a book out there called JavaScript for Data Science. It was written by a lot of different authors. It's totally free, and it was obviously written with the data community in mind. That'll also be in the description. So now that we've established how hard it is to learn, there's a perfectly natural follow-up question to ask, which is, what are the specific use cases of JavaScript for data science? In particular, you probably want to know what the special packages in the JavaScript ecosystem are out there for data science, and then why you would want to use those instead of the traditional juggernauts of R or Python. So I'm going to actually start this one off with a personal experience, which is that I missed out on the opportunity to be involved with a prospective client opportunity because I lacked the required experience with JavaScript, but specifically with the visualization library D3. The focus of the D3 library is on interactive visualization, and there's no question about it. The package is outstanding. Considering JavaScript's primary focus is on the interactive qualities of web development, let's just say that this thing is going to run circles around your standard visualization libraries in R or Python, even if you're making use of the Plotly API. I'll have a link in the description to a big D3 gallery in case you don't believe me. And there's several other JavaScript packages out there that stand out to me as serving huge purpose in the data science world. For example, we've got things like nlp.js, ml.js, and tensorflow.js. The use case for all of those things should be fairly self-explanatory. Then just generally speaking, let's suppose you work in an organization with very heavily JavaScript-based products and services, and you have to work pretty closely with software developers. Then yeah, obviously being able to read and write the same language is going to be highly beneficial. But obviously, and you knew this was where I was going, there are catches and reasons why JavaScript might not be something you want to invest your time in as a data scientist. Now the reason I do videos like this in the first place is because you can only learn so many things. If you try to learn too much, you end up spreading yourself way too thin and you end up learning nothing. And time that you spend learning JavaScript is time that you're not growing your skills in Python or machine learning or whatever else you're interested in. And here's the key thing. While it's obviously totally plausible to use JavaScript for data science, that's also totally not what the language was designed for. Compare that with Python, which is a general purpose programming language with years and years of data science specific development, or R, which was built by statisticians for other statisticians. 
And the fact that Python and R are so dominant in the data science sphere really is meaningful, particularly when you go about building innovative solutions and you need to do a little bit of Google or Stack Overflow consultation. Honestly, that alone makes it difficult for any language, whether that's Julia or JavaScript or anything else, to compete with those two. On one hand, you have less mature data science packages already developed, and when you need to go Google something, you have less of a chance of finding the answer to your question, again because not as many people are using the language for that same purpose. Now in the case of Julia, you have a lot of performance qualities going for it, and then with JavaScript, you have the amazing visualization capabilities, as well as the ability to collaborate more effectively in organizations that are primarily JavaScript development shops. But overall, and I'll say it again, I think what makes sense for the majority of people is to learn one of R or Python first, master it, and then go back to the other one and learn enough to be dangerous. And after that, and assuming you have a solid foundation in things like linear algebra, machine learning, and good communication skills, I think JavaScript could make a lot of sense to learn, but go into it knowing exactly why you want to learn it and what types of use cases you have for it. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it, hit the like button, and then let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments. Then I'll see you all in the not-so-distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.